So we're going to start working on our chain stitch. So I've just got my wool back in my hand. I'm quickly going to make my slip knot, taking my under there and then creating that. It's also a very quick way as well of making a magic circle. So you could make that a magic circle if you wanted to. So we've got our slip knot on our hook. Now the key thing is, is not to go too tight. So I've pulled that as hard as I can. And you can see that's a, you know, quite a tight knot there. And what we don't want, and I don't know if I can do it, <laughs> is I don't want my um, slip stitch to come off. My slip stitch to come off. My slip knot, sorry. Um, I don't want it to be so it can move and I don't want it so it's too tight that I can barely get it to move and it's squeaky squeaky nothing worse so let's just undo that knot again because I don't want it too tight come back to doing and I would suggest keep practicing your slip knots don't just do one and then move on do quite a few keep doing them um, until you feel comfortable so there we go so it's not coming off it's not too loose and I can work straight on it now the other thing to talk about is what hap what happens now and I've got to realign my wall and I pick up the wrong wall my suggestion to you whether you're left or right handed is that you start with your hook between your thumb so if you have a cup of tea you can do that you can just put your hand and you can hold it like that but I would start with your hook facing away so your handle is facing palm side ready to to grab and your hook side is facing outward you know fingernail side <laughs> i'm trying to think of a word that makes it easy for you right and then you can look at your wool and which wool is your tail or your working yarn so obviously the wool that's uh, attached to our yarn ball is our working yarn you can then go around your fingers and work that way without having to go oh what do i do with my wool now once you've positioned your wool in a way that's comfortable to you you can then move your wool out okay and then what you do is this hand never touches your wool other than when you're making it's not anchoring in any shape or form it, its main job your hook hand is to maneuver your hook nothing else now at the moment you can see i'm kind of all over the place i'm not really i've got no substance i've got no control because every time I move my hook, my wall always moves with it. So I've got no way of pushing through and pulling out. So I need to anchor. So the anchoring point or the anchoring fingers that I use, now you can use your index and your thumb, or you can use your thumb and your middle finger. Now the reason why I don't is because I my finger naturally, since reprogramming my brain, likes to flick up and down and be kind of a rebel. So the hand, the fingers that don't want to be a rebel and like for the control are my thumb and my middle finger. I don't hold the tail. I actually hold the base of the knot. So as you can see, my hook, because I'm holding it there, my hook can't make the stitch any bigger. It can't make it any smaller. I'm anchoring it so it's nice and solid and I'm not disturbing the loop either. So because I'm holding it on the base, it means that the loop is free to move, my hook is free to move. So now the next stage is to make our chains. <clears throat> so you're anchoring on the knot. You're not holding the knot and the stitch and everything and I can't move and it's really difficult. I'm holding it at the base of the knot. So the knot's there but not on the loop. So I've got this lovely space. My tension is nice here and I can work into that um, and pull my wall through. Let me just realign myself just there. Um, and again, this is where you're going to have the sensory download of feeling your wall transition through your fingers. So if you're struggling to pull your wall because you're overthinking this bit and this bit and this bit, this might become a little bit tighter than you want. And you might find that you're having to really pull that wall through. If that's the case, try and relax yourself. Do a couple of chains, go and have a cup of tea. Literally, I know you're thinking, why am I doing this silly task? But this task will show up so many mistakes, issues and problems before we start making stitches. And if we can face them now, then it's going to be much easier for us to then work out those problems before we get to the stitches. Because you really will be all fingers and thumbs. And I don't believe that, that you should be doing that before you do stitches. So this is just a task just to get our dexterity going, to understand our muscle memory and 
you know, some achieve some consistency within our chain so we know what we're looking for before we go further. Now, when you do come to do your stitches and we do come to do the granny square, we're going to feel like we've gone backwards a little bit. But don't worry, the muscle memory will kick in and it will support us and we'll trust the process. So, I've rambled. Yarn over means that the yarn is coming over the hook like so. And as you can see, my hook is facing out. Now, I'm going to lock that wall down by twisting it. Can you see how I'm twisting it with my fingers? So twist it with your fingers and then pull through. And we've created our first chain. So as we look at the anatomy of the stitches in our booklet, we'll see that we've got that nice V-shaped loop there. And then we're going to do yarn over again. So yarn over with the hook facing out. And then as we come to move through our loop, we are moving our hook towards us. So away from us, towards us. And then we pull three. Okay. And then do another one. And as you get quicker, you won't even notice that you're doing that motion. So out to in, pull three. Out to in, pull three. Now, I've done quite a few chains and you can see that they're front facing. Again, basing it on the anatomy stitches, we can see that that is the front facing part of our chain. We're, going to, we're not going to stay anchored here. We need to move as we grow. And as a beginner, you will find that after a couple of stitches, you'll need to keep doing that and working up. OK, because you're not used to the stitches. So the more you the closer you anchor, the better. So you could say, let's do one chain and then move up to the next one chain. And if you notice, I am using this hand to just gather myself so I can just reposition that hand and then I release. I don't stay there. So keep creating those chains and making sure that every time you anchor, that that is facing you, okay? If it starts to twist because you just you just go, oh yeah, I'll, I'm liking this, I'm making some chains now, and or just keep just keep anchoring and not worrying about which direction it flows in, you'll see that it starts to twist. Can you see how mine is starting to twist? If I lay it flat, you can see that there's a twist happening here, and that's because I'm not holding it front facing. So as you work, you should be working as if you're going up a ladder. And that that part of the ladder stays facing you in order for it to stay equal and flat. Now, you're, you might find um, the other thing that may happen is you might find um, that you're just you're not really thinking about your anchoring or you're overthinking it. And then you go really tight because you're getting really. But what will happen is you'll get inconsistent stitches. So you can see from from there, look. We've got, if you can see it, hang on, let me just reposition it. You can see that we've got um, the front facing loops and you can see I've got this twist now. So my chain won't lie flat because of that twist. And now I've got some untidy ones, which are a little bit looser than the ones that are here. So that's going to happen. It's inevitable. You go, It's going to happen. But it's what the key thing is, is you recognising that it's happened. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut it like so. And then all we're going to do is just going to pull that, that wool all the way through to finish it like so. And what I would suggest is, is that you keep making these and that you, you kind of number them. So say that's number one and then you do another one. So let's do another one. We'll do this one a little bit more consistent. Let me just get my wool in shape. Wrap my wool round. And make my slip knot. Just pull it off and then pull through. And then what I'm going to do is anchor, like I said, and I'm going to every now and then I'm just going to oh, hang on, and get some more, more wool out and position that on my finger. More fingers and thumbs myself today, so I'm just going to go up every few, and I'm just going to. Now, the key thing is you don't want your chains to be overly tight. They might be consistent, but if they're overly tight, it means you can't work back into them. So you don't want them too loose and you don't want them too tight. You want them Goldilocks style. Just right. So I've just um, caught the... Hang on. Let's get that right. Okay, so you just want them and you just keep practicing. Now, 
This is twisting, even though I had it front facing, but the nice thing is they are generally consistent. There's some loopy bits because I'm trying to do it in a way that I'm not overthinking too much. Um, but if I just... So always make sure it's front facing and you just keep making chains. Now, you might need to make 120 chains. What I would suggest is that you count... Um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's our 20th um, chain right there. I'm going to put a stitch marker in it, like so. So if I had to make a chain, a foundation chain, and I needed 120, if I count in 20s, um, then I know that that's a 20 stitch there. And that helps you to kind of mark out what you're doing as you go. <clears throat> So again, it's about consistency. I'm not trying to do this perfect because I want you to see um, how they look when they're not perfect. But you will know as they get better and better, you'll be able to make more established makes. And it's really important that you take the time to really appreciate this simple task because this simple task will be the make or break of a, a brilliant make. Um, as, as simple as it is, it will create a, a better finish if you do it correctly. So. I use this as a warm-up exercise. I use it as a way to warm my hands up if I haven't been crocheting for a while, just to get myself into a rhythm as well. So I'll just, you know, get some scrap wool. You'll have loads of scrap wool if you start crocheting like I do. Um, and you can just, you know, do a couple of chains to warm your hands up and get yourself familiar with maybe a new hook. Um, I've bought different hooks over time and every one of them is different. And there are some hooks I prefer and some hooks I hate. Um, and it's one of those things it's a love-hate relationship so you can do that as well with your chains and that really helps um, so yeah that's the chain um, make sure that it's front facing that you're anchoring and um, that you're just your your wall is moving through your fingers as smoothly as it can so just keep practicing 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 and when you get consistent when you you look at it and you think actually I'm really pleased and you will be I know you will be and um, when you get to that stage that's when you can start moving on to the next stages of building your granny square and we'll take you through the first stages of that as well shortly.